So let's go now to our next topic, transportation. And a Republican state representative has proposed a bill that would change how Pinellas County's transit organization is governed. The bill by Linda Cheney from St. Pete Beach got support recently from the Pinellas legislative delegation. And joining us to, by Zoom right now to talk about this is Domenico Pontoriero. He's a committee member with Car Free St. Pete. Welcome to Tuesday Cafe, Domenico. Hi, Sean. Uh, it's uh, lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. It's been a while since I've been uh, on WMF. I used to volunteer and, and host a show with some friends um, right after uh, Body Rock with uh, Mike B. So thank you. It's great to be on here again. Well, I'm glad to have you back. And uh, we're going to be talking about a really important story for the next, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so. We're going to be talking about transportation and th this move uh, to potentially revamp PSTA. But let's first, before we get to talking about the transit authority for Pinellas County, tell us what is Car Free St. Pete? So Car Free St. Pete is an organization that advocates and promotes uh, alternative transportation options for people in the city of St. Pete. Uh, we do a lot of advocacy, promotion, awareness. Uh, we also organize events that are not car centric. So we've done some events where we will close we will uh, close off a portion of the street and <clears throat> and have some kind of event in the street. Um, we started the Halloween on Central event, which is where uh, several blocks along Central are closed off so children can trick or treat to the businesses uh, along Central, which promotes the businesses, but also is a really fun family friendly event for people. So. Um, that is, that's what we do. Our mission is to, uh, get people, uh, to, uh, enjoy being car free and, and make that more accessible to people. So the main point of this interview is to talk about this proposal by representative Linda Cheney. She's from St. Pete beach, a Republican representative in the state house of representatives. Tell us what this bill would do if it gets passed. Okay. So <clears throat> Linda Cheney, um, the, she, she states that the purpose of the bill is to uh, is for uh, transparency and accountability. Uh, but once you dig into it, it's it's very clear that that's not what this does. And what it does is it really uh, uh, changes the contr control of, of of PSTA and is a step towards privatizing the PSTA. So <clears throat> what this essentially does is it shrinks the board of of the PSTA down and uh, removes some um, locally elected and appointed people from that board and replaces them with county commissioners and people who will be appointed by at the state level. Originally, people appointed by the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, uh, but um, that I, I believe that is being amended, um, but I'm not sure what what that's going to be in the future. Uh, but I believe it is still someone from the state. But that takes away local power, um, which is really important when you're planning a local transit agency. You need that input from the local uh, interests because and people that are going to be riding it because they know the city the best and they know the direction that it's going and how it's going to grow. That is the, 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 the main thing that is happening. Um, there are some other things that are that are that are in the bill. <clears throat> One thing that was that is still in the bill is a restriction on uh, advertising or promotional uh, expenditures. And uh, to be honest, at first I wasn't sure why this was there, but at the um, legislative delegation meeting, it, it became clear that there is some frustration over how the PSTA. Uh, uh, spend some of its money. In particular, it sounded like there was some frustration over spending on, um, <clears throat> there was a, uh, there have been bus wraps where they they take the bus and then they wrap it with artwork. They've done that twice uh, last year, uh, this past year. Uh, one was for uh, Black History Month and one was for Pride Month. And I think there's some frustration uh, from some of the uh, the people that are in support of the bill, that taxpayer money is going to promote, um, you know, uh, social initiatives that they don't like. Um, but, but you know, it's my opinion that <clears throat> this is actually really important because one goal of the PSTA is to increase ridership. And so 
uh, you know, creating some promotional materials to hand out at pride events or or whatever other events that get people excited about riding the PST or even wrapping the bus with a fun family friendly uh, uh, rap. I mean, the pride rap was literally uh, just uh, colorful dolphins. It wasn't anything offensive. Uh, so so limiting their ability to 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 do those kind of things is, I think, really negatively impacts uh, what the PST can do for us. Our guest is Domenico Pontoriero. He's a committee member with Car Free St. Pete. And we're talking about a bill that would overhaul the Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. So, Domenico, um, you mentioned that some of the the um, local control of this of the PSTA would be taken away by this bill. St. Pete would lose two of its three seats if this sure. passes on the PSTA board. Dunedin. Largo and Pinellas Park would all lose their local representation on this board of directors. So right now it sounds like it's a board that's made up of, of, of representatives from all around the county, all these cities to kind of see what's best for the transportation in, in each of these areas, but they, most of those would go away under this bill. Yes. So, and that was, there was some people, there were some people that came in uh, opposition to the bill uh, at the, to speak at the uh, delegation meeting. Uh, and they were people from those areas, from Largo and Dunedin, uh, that said, hey, you know, we, our taxpayer money goes into the PSTA uh, and, and we deserve representation. Largo, in particular, someone made the very good point that Largo is the third largest city in Pinellas County. And that it's really important that they get representation, and I agree. Um, you know, there's also there was also a, a, a bit of discussion about the fact that there are a few. I don't know exactly how many. I want to say just maybe three, uh, three or four um, municipalities that are not uh, part of the PSTA. Sort of declined to join. Uh, the other municipalities when the PSTA was formed. And I believe one of them might be St. Pete Beach. Um, but don't quote me on that. I'll have to double check. And so the the argument there is that if our taxpayer money are, is going towards the PSTA and we are working on these plan initiatives, then we should have representation at on the board. And that is different than those who, uh, those municipalities that have chosen not to be a part of that. Our guest is Domenico Pontariero. He's a committee member with Car Free St. Pete, and we're talking about a bill that would overhaul the Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. Later on in the show, we're going to hear about an organization that's bringing assistance and cheer to local homeless shelters. And uh, we're if you're listening live on December 5th, you can call in as well, because we do have a phone call if you don't mind taking it. Uh, Domenico, is that okay if we, if we take a phone call about transit? Yeah. Uh, all right, so it. we have Gary on the air, and Gary is asking, uh, what, what do you want to know about funding, Gary? Uh, what's interesting about what you guys talked about is, as, as they jockey for a position to get funding for different routes, different projects, and initiatives, what gets interesting is, is that some cities in Pinellas County get left out of the loop. So where this goes is, <clears throat> where are the mobility options if this bill goes through and, and maybe that's uh, with the car free St. Pete, that that's a great idea. Uh, and there's a lot of mobility options in Pinellas County. So where does that leave people? If this gets overhauled, that that's the big question. How do customers, uh, will they benefit uh, if this does happen and will they lose money if certain things don't go a certain way? Uh, that's why elected officials want to be on that board so they can jockey or state and federal funding, basically, right? All right. Thanks for the question, Gary. Yeah. Any any thoughts on that, Domenico? Um, so uh, yeah. So that is a concern, right? Uh, how do we get people around in in Pinellas County, and and more importantly, how do we uh, service the the transportation disadvantaged, right? The, the people who get, who cannot drive a car, which is you know, from the uh, the delegation meeting that I attended uh, just uh, a week ago, uh, it it became clear that there is there are some people that are that feel like uh, you know automobile uh, uh, transportation is superior, right? That's the way everyone should get around. But there was uh, a, a woman who is uh, physically uh, it, you know wheelchair bound. 
Uh, and she she said, you know, uh, the PST is the safest way for me to get around, you know, and and how how you know how do we how do we treat those people? Um, and so uh, so yes, yeah, so the mobility options are uh, is definitely an issue. Um, as far as funding, uh, I'll be honest, I've never been great with finances, but um, but yes, uh, uh, funding is is definitely an issue, and that's that's an issue that they kept bringing up, right? That they don't like that all this tax money is being spent on. The PSTA. However, the PSTA, you know, the millage rate has not increased uh, in years. The PSTA has been been doing a great job at managing uh, their budget within those constraints without asking for an increased millage rate. Um, and so, this is kind of an odd um, criticism that that keeps being made, right? That that the the amount of money that the PSTA is is getting is is too much, or or uh, they're not incentivized to improve their services or whatnot. Uh, these are arguments that kept being made, um, and uh, you know, I, you, you, the caller had mentioned something about <clears throat> representation from the different municipalities, and and that there is a, a need to have more voices, and I completely agree. Uh, I think that shrinking the board is not the best option. If anything, we should bring be bringing more people into the conversation uh, from those municipalities that have smaller representation, especially if they are buying into the PSTA, if they're if they're if they're paying the PSTA to service their area, they need to have a voice. You don't you don't take away that voice. Um, but it seems like there's a uh, this bill has an intention of of control, uh, limiting and shrinking the PSTA, uh, possibly in an effort to privatize it. And I, I want to add that Linda Cheney did mention uh, in her closing remarks that um, that that uh, she believes that way too much money gets spent on PSTA and perhaps we could replace the PSTA with um, with Uber vouchers. She suggested we could just give everyone Uber vouchers, which is not public transportation. That That is not the same thing. And that that I don't see how that could work. Um, anyway, that, that that's that I've been going on for a while. Sorry. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, thanks. And thanks for that detail about that. That's an interesting um, admission, maybe, if you want to use it use it that, that the, the, um, the PSTA might even go away just for Uber vouchers. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. Our guest is Domenico Ponto Riero. He's a committee member with Car Free St. Pete. And we're talking about, about a bill that would overhaul the Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority. And so, so far, you've mentioned a few times this uh, P Pinellas County legislative delegation meeting that happened a few days ago. And the 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 delegation, the nine members of the delegation, a mix of parties and mix of chambers, Senate senators and uh, House rep representatives from the Florida legislature voted six to three to support this bill. So what does that mean that the county legislative delegation supports Linda Cheney's bill? What will happen? Well, you know, it's not great, you know, for for the PSTA, right? So um, basically, the bill will proceed to the state uh, legislature where it will be worked on, uh, and it will, you know, it will evolve. Uh, but you know, it it arrives at the state level with sort of local support, basically, right? So so you know, the state, everyone on the state level will now, uh, you know, assume that this is something that we want, uh, which is not which is not great. Uh, there were three uh, three members of of that delegation meeting that voted against um, supporting this bill, uh, and that was Senator Rousson, um, Representative Rayner, and Representative Cross. and And Rayner and Cross were particularly vocal about opposing the bill. Uh, Rayner questioned uh, the necessity of it. You know, she asked, "Why is this necessary? What has the PST done to merit?" Uh, being restructured in this way. Um, and uh, Representative Cross uh, mentioned that this, uh, this, this direction goes against what the area is trying to do, uh, which is uh, trying to have more transit-oriented development, um, to um, work on uh, work on, on density. Uh, she also mentioned the Live Local Act, uh, and she felt like, like, uh, sort of shrinking the PSTA in this way or changing the PSTA um, to be less collaborative uh, kind, of, kind of goes against those those initiatives and, and the growth that we want to see in Pinellas County. 
We have an email that came in from David. He writes, the state of Florida needs to end this farce and consolidate the different county transit agencies into one big agency like Marta in Atlanta or the Metro in the DC area. It just makes sense. It would be more efficient, David says, and hopefully it would help with more cross county connections for buses and trains. We're so behind here on transit in Tampa Bay. It's just sad. Stop the provincialism. So that's David's opinion. We're kind of getting a little bit off to topic, but on the greater, on the bigger topic of transit, um, what would be the advantages of, of merging, say, Hart and P? STA to, to get this uh, regional transit as opposed to county by county transit? Oh, there would be significant advantages. Yeah, I, I totally agree. There needs to be in the very least um, collaboration between those tra transit agencies. But I do think that combining them and having sort of collective funding and, and initiatives uh, would be a good idea. So, you know, for example, <clears throat> you know, Tampa International Airport is our main airport. We have we have pie here, right? We have the St. Petersburg airport but but tampa is where where most of our flights leave and so uh getting to tampa airport from st pete is is pretty challenging if you're just riding um there i mean there are there are buses there are ways to get there right but if you had this sort of uh you know this sort of regional approach you would be able to coordinate those efforts you know there's there have also been there have been some efforts right there there's the there's the ferry that goes between downtown st pete and tampa which is which is amazing, and it needs to. We need to increase um, the the trips that we have there. We we need to take advantage of our waterways, and that's something that sort of regionally needs to happen, you know. Um, and so there there is a lot of advantages of of regional coordination uh, in general. Um, you know, my mother lives all, all the way up in um, in in in, in uh, Newport Ritchie, right? Uh, it's impossible for her to get to visit me via via transit. But in other cities, like the the emailer suggested, in other cities, um, especially in, like in Europe, right? That that is something that is possible, you know. Um, and I would like to see that possibly because my mother can't drive. Our guest is Domenico Ponto Riero. He's a committee member with Car Free St. Pete, and we're talking about a bill that would overhaul the Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority, or PSTA. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. We talked about some of the cities that opposed this uh, this bill that would consolidate, kind of shrink um, the the board of PSTA, and in favor in the the number of of uh, seats would grow. I think for the Pinellas Board of County Commission appointees, is that right? Would there be more county commission control of, of the board under this bill? One of the county commissioners spoke against the bill, Janet Long, and one spoke in favor, Brian Scott. So. How would the county commission um, be impacted uh, if, if this bill does get passed? So you're, you're correct. So there would be uh, more representation from the county commission. And one really insightful criticism that I heard from a citizen member of the PSTA board. So there is a citizen member uh, that is chosen to be on the PSTA board. And he said that the... Um, that the currently there are county commissioners on the PST board, um, but he mentioned that they don't have the same interests that some of the other members have, and they miss quite a, a majority of the meetings. And so the majority of the work that's done on the board is done by those other members. And so the concern from his perspective was if the board is entirely made up of county commissioners and state elected or state appointed uh, members. Uh, who is going to do the real work that needs to be done uh, to 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 make to figure things out and work things through to make the decisions that need to be made in the PSTA? Could the bill limit PSTA's flexibility to provide fair, free service? Okay, so originally, yes, there was a restriction on uh, basically the the original bill as it was written prohibited the PSTA from uh, offering free fares. <clears throat> in, in my opinion, this seems to be a reaction to some of the free fares on the Sunrunner. There was a huge reaction from some residents uh, in, in St. Pete Beach um, against the free fare. They they felt like it, 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 it was bringing, you know, the wrong kind of people, the wrong crowd to their, to their beaches. Uh, um, 
the, L Linda Cheney added an amendment to remove that restriction. So, so the PSTA in this bill um, now, as it is currently amended, the PSTA can um, offer free fares. And, and I and I think that that amendment might have come on the heels of, uh, I think there was some publicity <clears throat> uh, done uh, about some free fares the PSTA was giving to veterans, right? And so I think that maybe she realized that her uh, her bill would be an attack on veterans, which it would be. <laughs> so I think she added that amendment to sort of make it a little bit more palatable for 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 people. In the Pinellas legislative delegation meeting, some of the people who supported the bill expressed anger with the elimination of lanes along First Avenue's north and south in St. Pete. This also probably goes back to the Sunrunner debate. So uh, what have the changes been since Sunrunner started to First Avenue's north and south? And have those changes been beneficial? Uh, yes. So you're you're talking about the lane conversions that, that happened uh, with the Sunrunner. Uh, Linda Cheney and, and some of her, uh, the, some of the supporters of the bill uh, call it lane elimination. It's not lane, lane elimination. The lanes are still there. Uh, one lane on both First Avenue South and on First Avenue North in St. Pete uh, were converted to uh, bus um, bus dedicated lanes, uh, and they are still turn lanes for for cars for 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 automobiles. Uh, so it, the lanes are not gone; they were not deleted. Uh, they were just converted. Uh, their use was converted, and so it 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 does allow for more efficiency. It allows us it allows the buses to move um, uh, more quickly, right? So the the, the Sunrunner is, is is a BRT, a bus rapid transit, which is kind of an express bus. Um, it is only on those roads, and if you as a as a resident of St. Pete, I have noticed that. Uh, congestion has increased because a lot of people have been moving here, but I've noticed congestion mostly on 4th Street, MLK, and 275. 1st Avenue North and 4th Avenue South seem to move just as well as they did before, to be honest. Uh, so I think that the impacts of those lane chain, those lane um, conversions were only positive, in my opinion. Uh, what's interesting about the criticisms is the criticisms are, uh, a lot of them are coming from people from St. Pete, St. Pete Beach. Um, but that there was no lane conversions in St. Pete Beach. That was only done in the city of St. Pete. And so there there were some people that said, you know, uh, we want our lanes back. Give our lanes back. Uh, we don't want, you know, we we don't want, I think Linda Cheney said, uh, the city of St. Pete can continue to give up their lanes. But but here in St. Pete Beach, we're not doing that. And I, it, that never happened. So I don't know what she's upset about because that only happened in, in St. Pete. Well, all of this, I think, probably would might be the reason for talking about a lot of this might have to do with the number of accidents, the number of pedestrian and bicycle deaths in Florida. What do we know about how many happen locally and, and where Florida ranks as far as bicycle and pedestrian deaths? Well, I don't have the figures in front of me, but they are not good. Um, they, we, 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 are, we do have a problem, right? And the problem seems to be getting worse, in my opinion. Um, especially as, as our cities become more congested, more crowded, more people are moving to the area. Uh, there are people that are moving uh, here from rural areas that aren't used to urban traffic. Um, I have had uh, a, a, I have had a friend that was hit by a motor vehicle while trying to cross the street. Um, uh, you know, my sister just got into an accident a few, a few weeks ago, you know, uh, automobile accidents are um, a problem and they're dangerous. Um, you know, riding transit is 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 safe, um, but we do need to work on making the area safer for pedestrians and for people who drive. Um, and so I, I do think that increasing funding for transit is a step in the right direction, right? Because if you can get people in buses, um, it's 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 safer. It it reduces automobile uh, accidents. Well, we're going to transition to our next topic, but I want to thank you very much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Domenico. Thank you. And if I may, I started a, a, an online petition on Change.org to support the PSD in their efforts 
um, and oppose this bill. If you go to change.org and you and you search oppose the proposed changes governing the PSTA, you should be able to find it. I'm also working on um, support PSTA.us. Um, I'm working on having that that uh, URL a link directly to the um, uh, the petition. So if you're in support of it, please uh, check it out, share. Uh, and thank you so much, Sean, for having me on the show. It's been great. It's been great chatting about this very important issue with you. Yeah, I'm really glad you could come on the show today. And I should say that there's a link to your petition on our website, WMNF.org. There's a story there. Um, and I and I link to your petition and to more information about this bill and about uh, about transportation in general. So thanks for coming on, Domenico. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you, too. Domenico Pontoriero is a committee member with Car Free St. Pete, and we've been talking about transportation. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're going to change gears now. Coming up later in the show, we'll open up the phone line so that we can you can tell us what you think about that rape investigation into the chair of the Florida GOP. But now we turn to an organization that's bringing assistance and cheer to local homeless shelters through things like Christmas caroling and breakfast. John Stewart is our next guest. He's with the organization Celebrate Outreach. Celebrate Outreach. Welcome to Tuesday Cafe, John. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. I'm glad you could come on and tell us what is Celebrate Outreach. Celebrate Outreach is a coalition of St. Pete area faith groups and individuals and who are dedicated to preventing and eliminating homelessness. Uh, we do this through several programs. First of all, we're an umbrella group. So um, I, I uh, co-sponsor and co-coordinate a breakfast on Saturday mornings, uh, but we also have groups that do meals, um, pass out uh, uh, toiletries and clothes and such. And uh, we have a tiny home program. Uh, we're working on our second tiny home uh, for uh, people who would otherwise be homeless. So what we're trying to do is approach homelessness and eliminating homelessness from various uh, in various ways and, and taking parts of the problem and addressing those. What can you tell us about the scale of the homelessness problem here in the Tampa Bay area? It's it's pretty huge. The um, the point in time um, the point in time um, uh, count uh, last in last January found that uh, there are lots of homeless people. I'll get the uh, facts up here in just a moment. Um, and what we're doing for our part is that we are trying to um, we're trying to. to you know, do our part, what we can do to um, to eliminate it. For example, um, they, 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 the point in time is a count in, um, they do in January. Um, and they found in, uh, in the last, the last count that 62% of homeless people uh, were male, 38% were female. Um, they found that um, households uh, without children, 71%. It's an enormous problem, and um, we're trying to do our part to eliminate, um, eliminate, do what we can to eliminate it. Our guest is John Stewart with Celebrate Outreach, and this is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. John, this coming Friday is your Christmas caroling that you call Still No Room at the Inn. So what are the details, and maybe you can start by what, do, what are you getting at with that name? That name, uh, we're pointing out that Jesus, who was uh, born, he was born as a homeless refugee. Uh, rich people wanted money, so they taxed him, um, his family, and they had to flee and um, to a place. They had to leave, go to a place where they could be taxed. And because of that, he was born in a feeding trough. And uh, he was on the fringe. He would not be welcome in St. Pete Beach either. And we're trying to draw attention to that because we have, um, we, you know, we, it's easy to be distracted by Santa and Rudolph and and um, and Frosty. But the core of the Christmas story is a homeless boy who was born on the fringe of a fringe of a fringe of an empire. And so, and this, so what we're doing, oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask you what you're doing this Friday. Yeah. So um, the, the Christmas story, the, the phrase comes from still no room in the end. Um, that means that um, when when Mary and Joseph went to their ancestral city, they were point, pushed out to the fringe and there's still no room in the end 
for many people in St. Petersburg. Um, as, as we just heard, they're not wanted either. This is our 33rd annual, still no room in the inn. Um, it's going to be this Friday, December 8th, from 7 to 9 p.m. We begin and end at the Uni Unitarian Universalist Church. That's 100 Mirror Lake Drive in St. Pete. Um, all this is on our website and on our Facebook page, Celebrate Outreach. It's a lot of fun. Um, Celebrate Outreach does several things. As I said, we sponsor meals. We also have um, uh, we have a memorial service coming up on the 22nd. That's very powerful. That's for everyone who um, lost, everyone who was homeless, it's to remember the people who died on the streets of St. Pete in the last year. But coming up this Friday, we'll be stopping at a um, at a an apartment for retired people. They're gathering blankets and clothes and such for us. We're going to a house for people with addiction problems. They're gonna carol there. We're going to the shuffleboard courts, which is always a lot of fun. Um, and then we're going to a women's residence. Uh, and then we go back to the church. Well, we will have cookies and hot chocolate. And the rumor is that we're gonna have cookies and hot chocolate more than once. So if you like cookies, this is the thing for you. Um, it's It started um, years ago, uh, old time activists in, in the area will remember Claire Hanrahan. Um, she started, she was on the fringe for a while when she got back on her feet, she started ASAP Homeless Services and she realized the connection between Jesus uh, being born homeless and the homeless here in St. Pete at Christmas time. Uh, it was great for me. I used to teach at Osceola High School. I would invite my students and they would all show up and the cheerleaders and the gay straight lines and all folks would bring, they bring books and such. One of those students, Brittany Howard, is now a co-coordinator of the breakfast on Saturday morning. So that's very satisfying to see that and to run into people who say, oh yeah, I remember when we used to carol. Um, it'll be preceded by the uh, one of the organizations that's part of our umbrella group is the Unitarian Universalist Church. Uh, they have a sunset supper that will happen before the caroling. So you can come a little early and see what they're up to. Uh, you can join us on a Saturday morning. Um, last Saturday, we served 143 bagged meals um, and we get donations. It's an all volunteer. We get donations from civic groups and churches Two people in the neighborhood, three people in the neighborhood help us out. Uh, one woman pulls out of the um, food pantry donation she gets and gives to us. Another guy shows up if we have any extra meals. He drives them down to Williams Park. Another man was just driving by one day, said, what's this? Stopped, asked. He brings soup every week with spoons and crackers, soup in little cups. So it's a lot of fun, actually. The breakfast is fun. It's a network for people to to um, to who want to help and who want to have hands-on experience. Um, and it's a lot of fun with the caroling. Some years ago, we stopped at the women's residence, and I was talking with the director later, and she said, um, one of the women came up to her, and she said, you know, when I was a kid, I always wanted a Christmas like this, and I never got one, and now I have. So you never know. You never know when that person you're caroling for is having a dream filled. You never know when that student <laughs> 20 years later will come, 10 years later will come back and, and be coordinating the breakfast. Um, and it's, it's a great way to remember that Christmas at its core is about somebody who is suffering the same fate as people in St. Pete and who also would not be welcome on St. Pete Beach. Our guest is John Stewart with Celebrate Outreach. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa, and we're live here on December 5th. And if you'd like to call in and, and uh, say anything, our number is 813-239-9663. You can email dj at wmnf.org, or you can text 813-433-0885. And I'm giving out the number right now because after we're done with this segment with John, I'm going to let people weigh in on what they think about the Christian Ziegler story, the chair of the GOP who's facing rape allegations, or just a reminder that next hour, the uh, Wavemaker show will be all about that organization that broke the story on this. And uh, so I hope you stay tuned for that. I'll give you more information about that as the show goes on. But I'm just letting people know that if you would like to call in, now is the time. And speaking of that, I, I did get an uh, email just a few minutes ago from Dave in North Tampa. 
And he says he's breaking some news here. And I just confirmed it with our reporter, Chris, who's on the ground. And he says that charges have been dropped for the Tampa Five. And I, Chris clarifies, he says they're not facing jail time anymore. Right now, That they're, what they're going to do is a program that eventually leads to the charges being expunged. So that's reporting from WMNF's Chris Young live in downtown Tampa outside the courthouse. And uh, the Tampa Five are not facing jail time now. So that's a story we've been following here for a long time uh, here on WMNF. You can go back and listen to the interview with them from Friday on The Skinny on WMNF.org. So um, so thank you for those. If you have any thoughts about that, you can give us a call as well. And while we're on the subject of emails that are coming in, Bubba writes in, regarding the uh, caroling and, and the feeding of people. There are a lot of fake Christians out there who like to ignore Jesus's teaching about helping the poor. How would you respond to that, Bubba, to, to Bubba's statement, John? Um, as my late father used to say, that's in that boat over there. <laughs> Um, I'm just trying to take Jesus seriously personally. A lot of the people who come to help us out aren't religious, but what unites us, and a lot of the people who care, care aren't religious, um, and Carol aren't religious, but what unites us is that everyone should have shelter. Um, you know, there's a real toxic religion uh, running rampant in the country right now, and it's, it's pretty dangerous. Um, but I'm just trying to do what I can, and in, in, including resist that sort of religion. But um, I'm, I'm just trying to, <laughs> trying to do what I can and join together with others who are religious or not religious who are doing that kind of good work. So is there a website that people can find out more at, or is there? A, do you just uh, encourage people to go to where your events are, and maybe you can remind where those are as well? Yeah, there is a... Uh, there's a uh, website, celebrateoutreach.org. Uh, you can Google it. It'll pop up. We also have a Facebook page. There's contact information for me and Brittany uh, on the website. Um, if you want a, uh, more information about the caroling or to um, to join us if, with or anyone of the Celebrate Outreach organizations. Once again, it's the 33rd annual Still No Room in the Inn. It's Friday, December 8th. It's uh, this Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. We start and end at the UU Church on Mirror Lake Drive in St. Pete, down through downtown St. Pete. It's a huge amount of fun. Um, I wouldn't be doing this for 33 years if it wasn't. It's my Christmas. You know, after this, it's kind of batting down the hatches. And it's great to see so many people who've made this a tradition and to see the folks that we bring joy to and to ourselves. So thanks for having us on. Sean and, and letting us talk about it. We hope we'll see a lot of you folks this Friday, eight o'clock. I mean, sorry, sorry, seven o'clock, UU Church, St. Pete. And that's at 100 Mirror Lake Drive in St. Pete. Thank you so much for coming on Tuesday Cafe, John. Oh, thank you so much for having us. This It's, it's great to be able to share this kind of work and this kind of fun uh, and uh, this kind of joy. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. John Stewart is with Celebrate Outreach. There's still no room at the end. Christmas caroling will be this Friday beginning at 7 in the evening at the Unitarian Universalist Church at 100 Mirror Lake Drive in St. Pete. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Kanaan.